Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share all of my meal prep for the week. And the lighting may not be as great this week because I am filming this pretty late at night. Although you guys have got some different angles with the filming this week because my partner did help me film. Usually I just chuck my phone on a tripod and film. So I'm starting by cutting my cucumbers in some thin little matchsticks. I know some people don't like the soft bits of the cucumber in the middle. So if you like, you can just dig out the innards of the cucumber and just use the outside. Next, I'm going to slice up my avocado and then drizzle some lemon juice over the top of it so the avocado doesn't go brown throughout the week. And if you're new to my channel, I generally post videos around grocery hauls, budgeting tips and meal prep. So if you enjoy that type of content, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, so if you haven't guessed already, I am making homemade sushi rolls as one of the meal prep ideas throughout the week. No, I'm not going to prepare all of the sushi rolls on the same day, but what I am going to do is prepare the ingredients. That way, when we do make it throughout the week, it's nice and easy. I've got some lemon juice and salt in a bowl, I've got some strained tuna, and I've also added in some kewpie mayo. I kept it really simple. If you want to jazz it up, you can add little bits of onion in as well if you like. Um, or even use some wasabi kewpie mayo, but we kept it really simple with just basic normal um, Japanese mayo with lemon juice, salt and tuna. You could even go to the Sydney fish market and get some salmon sashimi and put these in the rolls if you like. But obviously for convenience sake, we've just kept it really simple with canned tuna. So we've cooked the rice, we've let it cool down a little. I actually didn't even buy sushi rice, so we're actually using normal rice. Um, so I'm just placing that rice onto the nori, sh nori sheets and then I'm going to add my filling. So this particular week we chose cucumber, avocado and tuna. Let me know in the comments what other condiments do you like to add in your sushi rolls. You can also buy a bamboo sushi mat to roll up your sushi rolls. I personally find it difficult to use so I prefer just rolling it up with my hands. And I think I put too much filling in because you guys will see later on in the clip. It's actually very difficult for me to roll. It looks more like a kebab than a sushi roll. But, you know, I don't specialize in this as long as it gets me fed and full, I'm happy. At the end, I actually end up putting in a little bit of water just to help the seaweed stick um, and make it easier to seal up the sushi roll. Okay, so let's be honest, this is not the best looking sushi roll ever, but you know what? I got the job done. <laughs> so what I did was slice up the sushi roll into more bite-sized pieces. Then I added some hot sauce on some of them, and the rest of them I added some QP mayo, had a side of wasabi and soy sauce as well. Moving on to my next meal prep, I start by chopping some carrots and onions. And I also wanted to mention, if you watched my most recent grocery haul, I would have mentioned that at the time when I went to my local butcher, they ran out of beef mints. So I actually went the next day to pick some up. I normally buy beef mints at Coles for $11 a kilo, just the basic standard three-star beef mints. And it's usually really, really fatty. Um, this time when I went to my local butcher, they only had one type of beef mints available and it was $13.50 a kilo. So a little bit more expensive. But the quality was so much better. So I would definitely buy, be buying beef mints from my local butcher going forward. Because even when I buy the lean beef mints at Coles, which is normally about $16 a kilo, it's still a lot more fatty than the beef mints I get at the butcher. And that actually works out cheaper. If you're comparing lean beef mints compared to the regular beef mints at the butcher, it's actually cheaper and it's more lean. Once I've cut all of my carrots and onions, I start by cooking the beef mince. And as you guys can see, it's a pretty good quality beef mince. It's a lot more lean compared to what I would get at Coles and Woolies. So I toss that in, start using my little spatula to break up the beef mince because I don't want them in large chunks. And then I add in the carrots and onions. If you want to add some more veggies in, you could probably grate some zucchini and add it into the mix just to bulk up the meal and hide some additional veggies in this meal. That same trick can be used when making a spaghetti bolognese as well. I just find it so easy to bulk up the meal and adding in additional veggies, especially when you're cooking meals that aren't using like beef mince or pork mince. 
And if you couldn't tell, I am making a chili con carne. So let me know in the comments what type of seasoning packet you guys use. I did end up purchasing the Maggie one because it was on sale this week and the seasoning tasted fine. I just would have preferred some more stronger flavours. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments. Also guys, let me know, do you guys enjoy this type of filming angle better or the usual stuff? Now I'm just adding in a can of chopped tomatoes. You can buy the whole tomatoes and crush them yourself if you like as well. I'm also adding in my black beans. I know the traditional chili con can, I think uses kidney beans, um, but I like black beans so I've used black beans. If you're a regular on my channel, you would know by now I don't make anything to the tea, nothing I think is authentic. I kind of just use whatever I have at home or whatever I like eating. So I'll sometimes replace ingredients with other ingredients that I prefer. So once I mix everything through, I let it simmer for a few minutes and then I add this chili con carne seasoning in, mix that through, and that's pretty much it. So this pot of chili con carne will feed us quite a few meals throughout the week. And we tend to serve this on top of some white rice to change the meal up. Sometimes we'll add it on top of pasta and we also add a light sprinkling of cheese on top. It makes a huge difference and we absolutely love it. If we had some sour cream on hand, we would also add that on top with some guac, but we didn't. So we just made a really simple meal, rice, chili con carne and cheese. It's a great, simple, easy, tasty meal, especially as the weather gets colder. Okay, so next meal prep, guys. I've got some garlic, sugar, salt, oyster sauce, ABC sauce, and Chinese cooking wine all on the plate. Then I'm adding in my pork mince. We're just going to mix all of that together. And then I've got some broccoli stalks, onions, carrots, zucchini, an Asian soup base, and some broccoli. I've got the minced meat here, so I'm going to mix that off camera and then I'm going to create little minced meatballs. So in this pot, I've got some boiling water and my Asian soup broth. And then I'm going to add in the broccoli stalks, onions and carrots in first. That will add in some additional flavor and I prefer my carrots and broccoli stalks soft and tender. In this next clip, I am making my meatballs. So the seasoning I've already showed you guys in the previous clip. I've just wet my palms with some water just to help me roll the balls up so the meat doesn't stick to my hand as much. I know some people use oil, I prefer using water. So I add the minced meatballs into the pot. Again, that's going to add some extra flavour as well. Then I add in my little zucchini chunks and then once that boils for about 5 minutes, I add in the broccoli at the end. I've also got another pot on the boil where I'm boiling some little pasta shells, the really baby ones. I like to have that with soup. Alternatively, you can just have the soup on its own because it's quite filling as it is. It's loaded with veggies. There's some meat in there. The pasta just helps fill you up a little bit more. I don't add the pasta into the soup because I don't like having my soup super cloudy. Also, this pot's going to go in the fridge. So if I leave pasta in the soup for a few days, the pasta tends to get soggy. So I like to boil it in a separate pot and store the pasta in a separate bowl. That way, when I'm ready to eat, I just heat up the pasta quickly and then add the soup in as well. So this is what the finished product looks like. It's similar to what I made last week, but slightly different. It was so good.